Hey, it's Tracy Silverman. Thanks for tuning in to the For the Greater Groove podcast, a special edition. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Yeah. Yes, why is this night different from all other <laughs> nights, as, as we say at the Seder table? Yeah. Because of this guy right here, Daryl Anger, my big brother, <laughs> oh, my old friend. Oh my goodness. So great he to be here, man. here in Nashville. Yeah. And so we're doing a special Live, not live, a video version. Yeah. We're in the same room. Yeah, yeah. We can actually jam together. It's not a Zoom yeah. thing. It's, no, a, it's, it's not a, a Zoom thing. Yeah. It's a, what's the opposite of Zoom? Uh, like if you're really snaily <laughs> and a slow. Like, moose, I guess. Yeah, moose. It's a moose. <laughs> it's a moose <laughs> session that we're doing. And uh, Daryl Anger, if, for the maybe one person out there who is watching who doesn't know who Daryl is. And it's important that that one person knows. <laughs> knows. Darn it. <laughs> but it's really important that everybody remembers all of the stuff oh, yeah. that Daryl has is. done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this by You're going to help me with your bio. Because you're right okay, here. So sure, why, yeah. why should I just screw yeah. it up and without, with you sitting there going, oh, right? Because I, <laughs> well, I, know you, uh, I know your bio pretty well. It's been a long Plenty. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I, you don't I, really I'm, have room for that. I'm even a small yeah. part of in in the like oh, a small you're part of it. Gigantic. Because I mean, you're you know, bigger than you know in the T I S Q year. Part of should know actually. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, yeah. Grisman was your first gig, right? A founding. Yeah, that was a, that was the real gig. Yeah. Right. That's that kind of was the first happened. thing, yeah. and then that kind of morphed into Montro. We're gonna do yeah. the abridged yeah. Montro band. Yeah. Take a, a real quick. Yeah. Yeah, we had a like a sort of proto mantra that included David Balakrishnan and, and Mike Marshall. And, I didn't know uh, David. Barbara was... Higby. Yeah, so that was that was cool. That was um, I was playing a lot of cello, bass. See, there's always band. something I'm learning. Yeah, something from weird. This guy. Yeah, not that. It, was it, that yeah. the Great American Music? No, we were calling that uh, uh, embarrassingly, but it was Dave's idea to call it Sahib. Ah. Because uh, of well, I don't know why, but um, <laughs> yeah. But that was that was a good band. That was we were experimenting with, stuff, you know, trying to figure out how to play j real jazz on acoustic string instruments. And that was with Mike Marshall. Yeah, Mike came in uh, as a as you know we had a couple of different mandolin players. And Mike Interesting. Showed up at the end, and then that morphed into uh, Matro. Right. With and, Barbara. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Michael Mannering. Michael Mannering showed up for that, and that was great. I should probably turn off my phone for this, huh? <laughs> It's probably Michael Mannering calling and saying, "Where are you going to mention me?" We just did, Michael. Stop calling. <laughs> Stop calling me. Hey, I'm going to really turn this off. Hold yeah, on. Michael would probably be the last. Uh, obviously, that's a joke because Michael would be the last person. Yes, to, you know, Michael, a, humble to the bone. Humble to the bone. Yeah, it's incredibly wonderful In fact, bass player. We're going to eliminate that whole mention of him because it would just make him uncomfortable. <laughs> Too much attention. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll edit this up. You'll never see any of yeah, that stuff. Yeah. We'll, we'll <laughs> and then <laughs> that moved into the Turtle Island, founding yeah, yeah. the founding one of the founding members yes, right here. Yeah, so um, David and uh, you know uh, yeah Mark Summer. Um, Mark Summer. Yeah, didn't really become Turtle Island until Mark showed up. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you gotta have a you gotta have a cellist in a quartet. It's pretty kind of pretty important. Central. Yeah, <laughs> for a string of, quartet. Yeah, that thing. And, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, he showed up. Yeah, and uh, and then post TISQ, a uh, bunch of projects. Yeah, Katie barred the door. It was just like what, whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> and public was, of Strings, yeah, Psychograss that was, was a, important. A big, yeah, Public big Strings. One for yeah, a while. the duo, the ongoing duo was Mike Marshall. Right. That went on and 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 on. And still is and still is going on. Still going we just on. released a forty-one year anniversary recording. And wow. yeah, kind of cool. Wow. Um, so what else? Yeah, and then like the Furies and uh, that yeah, that was uh, mostly uh, me and a lot of really great women uh, musicians: Emmy Phelps, uh, Sharon Gilchrist, uh, you know Maeve Gilchrist. At one point, the Furies included two Gilchrists. My life is rich. Re related, and I'm assuming. Well, very distantly, they can't find it. 
you know, common ancestor. Although I'm no sure there way. is one. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's kind so of wild. crazy. <laughs> no, that was great. Um, well, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah we had okay, the Furies, and then there's Fiddler's Four. Fiddler's Four, right? I almost forgot about that. Yeah, it was Michael Doucet and um, yeah. Bruce Malski and and Rushad Eggleston. Right. Yeah. Wow. Back when Rushad was, you know, could be understood. You know? <laughs> Before he was speaking f only, only in. in uh, Whatever it was, yeah, Sneed. Sneed. yeah. yeah. Um, okay, he has a translator that travels with him, so that yeah, you know, we can it's communicate. Called, it's him. called a cello. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's yeah. his. That's his bridge to humanity. Yeah. And um, Chad's anything else on my notes? Oh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Sun. Oh, Mr. Sun. Right. right. My current group, which is lovely and yeah. uh, quite interesting, you know, just kind of sort of back to the roots of what I did. You know, mandolin, guitar fiddle and bass, which is pretty much the original, you know, setup for the, Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, so that's not <clears throat> it's not exactly difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, like a Grisman quartet. Yeah. Yeah. Which we did have it for a while, yeah. Yeah, which was really cool. And yeah. uh, of course a professor at Berkeley. Oh that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That was nice. Yeah, I was a professor at Berkeley for almost twelve years and that was Amazing. You always wanted to be a professor. When we were in Turtle Island, yeah, you were kind of the professor. Well, sort which, of, you know, according to some people, yeah, <laughs> I was professing was like, a lot. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I was professing all over the place. Actually, you were all yeah. very professional. Everybody was professor. You were all, we were all we were all professional. Yeah, we just weren't. We didn't all become professors. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, although we could, you were we doing, were so close. You were doing some stuff, we though. You were here. You're here at Belmont. I, I mean, yes. you're professing. I am professing at Belmont occasionally. University, yeah. And uh, and you're also professing at Artist Works. You do a lot. That of, is true. I have an uh, online music fiddle school that um, yeah. yeah is still going. Yeah, and what's that about? Still going. Tell us about that a bit. Right now. Right still going. at this yeah. moment. Now. Right. How about now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone going. right now is making a video. To, to send to you. Send to me that I will personally evaluate and send them back and say, practice. <laughs> no, it's it's I always actually practice, wonderful. I always thought that practicing is cheating because, I mean, anybody <laughs> can do it if you practice, right? I'm not, <laughs> Maybe not. I'm not totally sure about that, man. I, I don't know. It's, it's, you know. I have practiced and there are things that I cannot do. You know? But, you know, maybe I was just practicing the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to say. But there are things that I have practiced that do work, and there's things I don't practice that, that seem to work. also work. It's a mystery. <laughs> Who can tell? So it's not really proven. Practice is not yet proven. It's still know. a hypothesis, but we're going to go with it. We're going to yeah, go with it. Let's go with it. Yeah, the odds are pretty good yeah. of improvement So for you students out there. Um, <laughs> and uh, and what what are we gonna what are we gonna talk about today? I mean, well, we got Daryl Anger. We've got a, a show about grooving and chopping. <laughs> you know, and I've, playing you, rhythm. Maybe we better talk yeah. about that stuff. Yeah, just That's a little bit. Fun. Yeah, let's do it. You know, uh, we have plenty of people that are you know just. Doing it, it seems to be even in Celtic music, it's it's yeah. just caught on, yeah. and it's really a beautiful thing. And 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 you know, it certainly is. I think the, the initial, uh, you know, uh, kind of bulge of unsightly bulge of chopping is sort of, <laughs> sort of <laughs> kind of settled, you know, to the where it becomes okay. Well, it's just another technique that we use in string playing at the appropriate time. Right. You know, so that's a, great. It's just a bow. It's just like... But people are uh, still wanting to know, you know, well, how do you do it? You know, is it like, you know... And, and people do do it differently. Uh, you it's, know. i got to say, one of the interesting things... Sorry to interrupt you oh. there. Um, hold, hold that thought. But I found it really interesting is, as I talk to people on this podcast about this kind of stuff, that everybody approaches it a little differently. That is true. Yeah. It's really... Interesting. There are so many ways to approach this, and just ways to teach it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have my little system. Yeah. Casey has a way. You know, yeah. Mike Block was on. You know, it's like it's like front, forward, middle, front. You know, I was like, uh, oh, okay, I never thought of that. You know, I was like, wild, yeah, I picked it? it up from Casey. I'm like, oh, okay. So you know, I learned, I learned it from you. So I, yeah. I, I feel like you had to. I mean, you, it was part of the gig. It know? was part of the gig because when I showed up at the yeah. Turtle Island doorstep. 
one day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with like one of these. <laughs> that right? was amazing. Yeah. And then you proceeded to set, you know, bar to, bar to violin, you aced every, you know, I, that was my moment of like going, okay, <laughs> oh, there are people in this world that play the violin better than I will ever no. imagine playing. Differently. Yeah, but different, but better. You know? <laughs> no. And, but I learned I, a lot from you. I know that you, you know, you probably learned quite a bit from me, and yeah. we both learned from each other. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that can happen. And, and yeah, it, it really, it's, it's very true. And I refer to you as my big brother a lot. As you know, which That's I, so sweet. I, I and it probably annoys the crap out of you. Oh, but not at all. I, because you taught me everything. You not only taught me how to chop, you taught me how to you know, like how to how to pack for the road. I had you know, I'd been just doing like bar gigs in New York and stuff and I'd never this was my first big break and, and you showed me the ropes. You know, cool. just about everything about it. How to Wow. How to tour, how to play, how to chop, how to you know, how to be in a quartet. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, you had so none much of it, together. None of it know? really stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know. <laughs> but you know, I mean, the things that you you are capable of doing. You know, you've gone on to just incredible uh, things that I can only dream of doing, and it's so great. I mean, because you're, you know, you're Tracy. You've always been like, you know, yourself, and uh, it was always obvious that you, would, you know, just do amazing stuff. Thank you so much. But you know, here's the thing. So you kind of learned the job. Did you actually learn it from Richard or just sort yeah, of Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, I, I took a lesson from Richard. In so Los he actually Angeles. like showed... Yeah, I said, Richard, that thing you do, what the heck is it? And yeah. I might have been patient. I mean, if Richard was patient zero because he invented it, I was patient, patient number one. one. Yeah. Right. Patient yeah. number one. And then <laughs> I did that for, you know, a couple of years. And then, um, you know, uh, I think I, I taught Dave Balakrishna how to do it. Right. And, uh, yeah, cause because the idea we were, of Turtle Island yeah, was had, to not have drums. Right. Yeah, we wanted to, you know, we needed... If you're going to play contemporary music, contemporary music has percussion, has drums. you got to put that in there. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just the string section. So, like, so you were sort of on this mission to teach the quartet first how yeah, to do that. Yeah. And of course, you know, yeah, Dave was, you know, it took him a couple of months, but like he totally got it, and uh, it was great. And then uh, Mark actually really ran with it and, and yeah. just uh, developed into like a whole comprehensive technique with the pits the ta and slapping. Ha tapping. And that was neat because we were in the same, you know, we were in the Bay Area, which you know at that point, you know, had and Michael Hedges was there, Michael Manning was there, all the tapping guys. It was right. Very, two very important tapping guys. Right. So Mark picked up on that immediately. And Interesting. Was you know, I never put that together. Yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. You know, because Michael was over, you know, quite a bit, you know, at the house. Yeah, I remember sitting there with Barbara and and right. Mike Marshall just. Um, he, he came out, you know, we had some food, and then he said, oh, I want to play this new tune I just wrote. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it's really cool. And we are just sitting there in my living room listening to Michael play um, Rick Over's Dream, which is, for, for, many, for those of you who are into, like, tapping guitar, yeah. that's it's it's a, a revelation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a classic. It's, it's like... Uh, it's know. like Eddie Van Halen eruption for, yeah, yeah, for the like Wyndham like Hill crowd. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, <laughs> in slow motion. Yeah. Backwards and in heels. And <laughs> you, know, you know, like it's a like acoustic guitar. So, you know, that's all, everything, you know, it's all in the air anyway, you know, yeah. I think. That, that idea that you could play a percussion on, you know, any string instrument. So this, that just became more of a thing for us. And that became, you know, a very important, you know, piece of the Turtle Island puzzle. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then, and, and so when you came in, that, you know, that was... You yeah, know, I, mean, I mean, that was the first you, thing. You could do everything else, you know. Oh, there's just this one little thing, you know. You have to be able to do, like, a totally different, uh, totally unfamiliar <laughs> yeah. technique. Yeah, and it took me a couple months. It took me Did a while. It? Yeah. It took yeah. me a while, maybe more, till, and, and you know, the, I think the entire time I was in the group, I, I was always being tweaked. I was always, you know, the guy was like, um, you know, don't don't forget to, like, keep pushing it, you know, like, don't think about it. You always got to push the beat, you know, <laughs> yeah, like that, right. like... Danny would always tell me like, "No, you got it. You got to push it." And because um, there's nobody else pushing it for you. Right. Because nobody, nobody else is gonna push it for you. <laughs> you got to do it by yourself. 
<laughs> but so and so now you know I when I teach it to students I teach the Daryl Anger method of chop the way you taught me and I remember you taught me and and I'll bet you you don't teach it the same way now because I'm sure you have progressed I probably, since that was you know, 1990 learned how to teach it you know on you and a couple other people you know? <laughs> right well that's how that's yeah for you students out there that's how us teachers get better at what we do we practice on you guys <laughs> so true <laughs> right and you know really can you really say you know something until you've taught it you know that is Leonard such a thing. Bernstein said the best way to learn is to teach there you go yeah and I think he said that he should have said that he anyway. should have said it yeah you probably would have. he would have if he'd have thought of it so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so you know I, I teach like the five rules of the chop it's all the way at the frog you turn the hair out mm -hmm. you keep your hand loose that yeah. was actually a rule relaxation number yeah. three number four you dampen your strings and number five leave it on the string I remember you said yeah leave it on the string because you got to and what we would do, we would do like high school things, and you would, you know, you would, and you would always go through the same. So that's yeah. the way I teach it. But I'll bet you, that's you, cool. I bet you have an improvement on that now. I, you know, I've gone, I've, I've done, I've sort of reversed it, because the leave it on the string part is yes. the part that always. This I remember you said this, and I was like, yeah. God darn it, he's right? made it better, and now I got to write <laughs> another book. Start. Right. This is your rest position. On the string. Then your you first start. stroke. Right. Which is kind of a drag because I used to say, you know, oh, what, you know, according to Newton, what goes down must come up. And now I can't say that anymore. <laughs> I just have to, like, be, you know, because what comes up must, must come, come down, down which right? Is you know, which actually is actually what Newton which is, said. Who cares, <laughs> you know? I mean, that's <laughs> obvious. <isn't it? laughs> right? So, yeah, but that, you know, that's, you know, that's cool. So that's my one thing, you know, trying to get people to leave the bow on the string is... is it's hard. Always, yeah. Right, because they want to, you want to slap it. Yeah, they want to bounce it off, right? Because right? that's the way you do it, isn't it? Right. No, but it's not. Uh, well, yeah, so but I mean, you've taken it, so, I mean, because, you know, you've, you've come up, you know, with like this incredible, you know, teaching career, and you've just got a mind for, you know, this great analytical mind, you were able to put this you know, book together that I never could have even imagined. I, I, I see my small place in the world as transferring the things that are in your brain to other people. Because, but here's the thing about the chop. It's a stroke, yes. We can show people how to do the stroke. But as we all know, a chop stroke is not a chop groove. So true. And, and you made it, turned it into a rhythmic thing. So it's like, rather than having a, you know, a drum that you can hit, now you have a drum kit and you're like, you know, yeah. Steve Gadd or whatever. Well, it's limited, but there, yeah, you know, you can, you know, the, the idea that, I mean, all this stuff is useless if you're just making sound, you know, anybody can make noise. You could even make a regular occurring sound, you know. <laughs> Periodic. <laughs> Periodically <laughs> precise, you know, but, you know, is it going to move? Are you, know, you going to make you want to tap your foot? Is it going to make you, yeah, right. Is it going to make you want to, you know, go back and forth? Is exactly. it going to make you want to flop around on the floor like a fish? <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the immortal words of Bonnie Raitt. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> That's what we want. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so give him a little demonstration. And I was really privileged to be able to teach a rhythm class, rhythm strings class in Berkeley where I was forced to, to deal with this stuff and del deal, you know, delve in a little more closely, you know, uh -huh. rather than just take an intuitive approach. Right. <laughs> Tracy, <laughs> I've got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Let's play a classic New Orleans second line hit um, right. by um, by the, uh, the the meters. Ah. Let's play. Uh, See if I know that, it. That tune. Um, yes. Oh, I, uh, one of them. Uh, 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 sissy, sissy, strut, sissy strut. The sissy strut. Sissy yeah. strut. 
Um, one of the great features of this tune is that it's in C7. C7, I knew that song. I know that, yeah. that chord. That, and that is the chord. That is the one chord that you need to know in order to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> and just by some crazy miracle, I happen to have a C string on this instrument. Go figure. Yeah, weird, huh? Yeah. So, um, right? So yeah, see strut. Um, yeah, just the the idea that uh, okay. So you know you can't be the cymbals and you can't be the bass drum. Well, you could be a little bit of a bass drum. I you know yeah, that's nice. You know if you can really coordinate all of your hands. You know again something that Mark. You know if you've got a cello. Yeah. You know you got a lot of uh, extra uh, firepower. You know that like you can deploy. 
uh, <laughs> if you're into deploying. <laughs> if you like to deploy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but uh, basically, you know, what you got is, is hi-hat and snare. And right. if you know anything about drum kit, which I did have a drum kit in my house for a couple of years, and that was incredibly instructive. Yeah, was, I bet. Was, uh, you know, the idea that the groove comes, you know, is generally generated within the drum kit by those those two instruments. The snare and the hi-hat are kind of the things yeah. that, that sort of are always going and sort of defining the, the sub-rhythms. Like you're talking about, what, what do you call that? The inner... Groovons. The groovons, yes. <laughs> the, the smallest the particles. The smallest the rhythmic groove. particles, yeah, of the groove. That's so great. And, uh, yeah, so but that's, yeah, you know, so that's yeah. really, so that's what you need, you know, if you... You got hi hat and snare, and then you can add, um, you know, notes, which is great. Yeah. And you can add a, and you've got that systematized so beautifully. You know that idea that the constant up down. Yeah, that's where the motor. it all comes like out. Yeah, you know, which, motor, which yeah. I pick up from guitar players because that's yeah. the way they teach. You know, it's that's the way guitar teachers teach guitar players. Like, yeah, you know, just keep the, keep the motor yeah. going. But um, let me ask you something about the vertical versus horizontal aspect of I what you're that. doing. I love that. You know, that you you also identified that. You know, which is really cool. You know, because that's a that's the way that you showed people how they could get into it, and right. that is such a great thing. The idea that. Um, this is all, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the strumming, right? You, you go in horizontal, right? The correct right. bowing technique. Right. You so don't go. Right. Right, because right. of the ghosting. Yeah. All the ghosting. Yeah, and I've been, I've been experimenting with that lately, um, especially in my film my school, where kind of identifying that idea that to get the ghosting, you're actually making circles. That's what you wrote about in my book. Yeah. Bow circles. And I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm actually getting a whole lesson series together within my online school it's right very now. very interesting. Like just developing that. I'm writing some goofy little tunes. See, now, here's another perfect right? example of something I would never would have thought of. You know, probably because I'm cla I come from a classical background, and this was just never even. Nobody I mean, wanted I didn't to know about occur that. It never occurred to me. <laughs> you know, it was always back and forth. None of this. You know, yeah. but rather than you know, I mean, my approach was always you know ghosting either with your left hand uh -huh. or yeah. you know with lightening up pressure. It never occurred to me that that's this so actually naturally makes that happen, and yet that's a kind of a fiddle thing, or is that your own thing? I think thing? it's a fiddle thing, you know, you see, especially in the Appalachian styles, you know, because there's a lot of that kind of, you know, in order, you know, people don't actually necessarily have, they don't use this, the pinch, in order to, because you can do that, I mean, that's a pretty standard thing where you're, like, you, it's an involved Vivaldi and everything. Right, the martelet. Yeah, there's the part martelet. is really yeah. what it is. There's a pinch that where you're, that and that can be used. But um, the Appalachian folks um, will do that as as sort of waving your arm yeah. up and down. Interesting. The way yeah. you know, and that's it's kind of like figure eight bowing. I'm not that great at it yet, but I'm working. <laughs> but that can all that sort of translates into the um, yeah. you know that 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 just becomes figure eight. I mean, the simpler version has circles, mm -hmm. so you get both. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of what, so that's what I've been sort of working on is trying nice. to and and again anything that keeps your wrist relaxed, freed yeah. up, keeps you know this whole assembly. Flexible yes. and That's, active. It was one of the five rules. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> one of the tablets yeah. that were handed That's down. Interesting. Yeah. And I you know, I at one point I'd love to have a conversation, you know, maybe not in this podcast, but just about how, you know, in in you know like legit violin playing where the you know where the difference is between the, the wrist and fingers following the arm. Right? And where the wrist and fingers start 
initiating yeah. this stuff. Interesting. You know, because that's there's yeah. there's you know that's you're always going back and forth over that line. You know. Yeah. And that's uh, something I've you know I've been a, I'm a real wrist and finger guy. I do a lot of that yeah. articulation, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And for the fast fiddle playing, you know, if, uh, if I can play, you know, if, yeah. There are days when I can do this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, when people like Mark O'Connor and Stuart are masters of this. Just yeah. I believe I've I've mentioned it on at least two other of these podcasts already within the first few. Um, how I learned this from Daryl Anger. If you want to play rhythmically accurate, accurately, um, use less bow. This yeah. blew my mind because I was you know you know, the classical thing, and it was always, well, you know, use to. more bow, yeah. play louder. And I remember you telling me, like, you know, and, of course, you never... By the way, I learned so much from this guy, <laughs> he never, ever told me anything. You had to figure it out. I had to figure it out loud myself. <laughs> no, he never told me. He led by example, is my point. And I would watch you do it, and, and you might have said something like, hey, you don't need, you don't need all that bow, you got a microphone. And that was all I needed. And then I would just watch you, like you know, the the intro to the solo on on um, oh, on uh, yeah, uh, uh, Tunisia. Tunisia, yeah. yeah, right. There's no way you could do that with it. No, like, <laughs> and that's like such you know classic Daryl moment, which I will play in the podcast right <laughs> here. <laughs> And <laughs> whoa, did I do that? <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> that and uh, yeah, I mean, but when you, w w I was able to stand next to you on stage night after night and watch you do this, and yeah. I'm like, like, I, I, at first, you know, being the arrogant jerk that I am, I, you know, when I first got there, like, he's not using any bow, jeez, <laughs> yeah, you know, and then, kidding. yeah, you know, I was like, <laughs> God, you know, Mr. Galamian would, would, you know, <laughs> he'd throw up, all right, and then. It started to dawn on me the brilliance of that, and now it's like de rigueur for and anybody who I teach. Like, yeah. you know, if you're trying to play rhythm, it, it, rhythm is about accuracy. You know, there yeah. there's no room for for that sloppiness when you're when you're, you know, when you're really sitting up a, a, a tight groove and stuff like that. And the more bow you use, the less. Tight yeah. it's going to be. You know, so all there is to it. Something recent. I don't, I don't know if we talked about this. You know, when I was, but you know, if you want to legitimize it, you know, we can talk about stage acting yes. versus movie acting. Right. Stage right. acting, where you you know you right. have to. I mean, nobody's going to hear you. Right. Right. So you have to play like that. Right. But now um, we have microphones. But yeah. So we can just. It's a different. It's a different thing. Yeah. And. Um, Let's circle b back for a second to the horizontal versus vertical thing. So right. when you're playing, um, do you consciously think about, oh, I'm going to bring more horizontal into this, or I'm just going to just going to be like a total chop, or is it just constantly morphing back and forth? And is the reality of it that it's just this very flexible? I'm not thinking about it a lot. Yeah. You know, that's been sort of my mo. You know, with this stuff, it's just don't think about it, and that's why it's take it so long to develop it to anything and and i see people like you and casey and and these folks who are just so like phew, they've taken off with it because they actually have put some thought into it because we had to learn it <laughs> maybe so yeah <laughs> you, you got in the habit you just you invented it <laughs> but yeah the idea that you know you had to be able to um you know you there's, there's a certain amount of horizontality that has to happen um if you're, you're playing notes right Right, if you if you, you if you have a downstroke, it has to be somewhat horizontal. Right. If you want to play harmonically, so yeah, there's that. Um, and really, you know, it's just something that I probably started doing it very simple, just playing. When every mm -hmm. time there was a chord change, you right, know, I'd right, just to indicate like yeah. a little bit of harmony, yeah, like dexteriors, like what's the yeah, the yeah, for that? yeah. <laughs> wow, 
Um, I can't believe I remember that. <laughs> it's been a long time, man. Now, the interesting thing was that it's alternating. That's yeah, down, up. My quartet at Belmont, you know, we, uh -huh. we were playing that, and the music that, you know, you graciously yeah. wrote down to try to mm -hmm. notate yeah. this unnotatable thing yeah. that we're hearing, um, you know, the violin's like, what is this? <laughs> There's a lot of X's. Yeah. yeah. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. And, and I would say, well, just just listen really carefully. Yeah. So, yeah, and of course that could also be, it could just be played, right, horizontally. Right? Just, you know, you're just right. ghosting everything. <laughs> And that's that was one of the, your you know teaching innovations that I love, where you're going from horizontal to uh, vertical, you know, gradually moving up the bow, which is just brilliant, you know, that idea where you're starting here. You're kind of at the balance point. You know, it, it opened up, it, it to, in my mind, you know, all I'm, I've been doing, like with my stuff, the book and stuff, is to try to help people to figure out what you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and to, because because everybody basically just wants to be able to, you know, sound like Daryl. And, and I, I remember from watching you do this for years, that there was all of this stuff that was not a chop, but it was not this. It yeah. was somewhere in this wonderfully rich, fertile middle ground where all of this stuff was happening. Right not, there. Not there, not yeah. there. Right this around there. This is the spot where the bow starts <laughs> talking back to you. Yeah. It starts communicating <laughs> with you. It That's goes, great. oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, but I like that. Keep doing that. It's like a cat, you know? <laughs> Oh my God, that is so horrible, <laughs> <like>, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's golden. That that's is golden. Good yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So that's. I started yeah. calling it percussive bowing, just yeah. for lack of a better word, because it's like, is it a note or is it a noise? I can't right? tell. Yeah, it's, I, it's somewhere it, in between. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> right. Is it? Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. The, Especially when you're just like dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're not even making a tone. Because when we would jam, when we'd start jamming, like, uh -huh. we, you know, we would love to take tunes and just like let them devolve. Yeah. You know, and, and just go wherever, you know, just sort of like water that just sort of like left the, the stream bed and just yeah. like started wandering out of here. Right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. where's it going? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe okay. just, and, um, uh, and, you know, we would start, we'd start with a tune, and then somewhere, you know, somebody would be playing something, and more often than not, you would be accompanying, as yeah. much as, as the best soloist in the, you know. Well, the but my, you know, that, those years in high school of playing last chair, second violin, <laughs> really did a great thing for me, you know, just that idea that, oh, I'm an orchestral player, I'm playing it. Another line, I'm playing a support line. A middle line. part, a yeah. support line. And this was, this is the whole point of the podcast, is the whole point of my life right now, <laughs> is, is to hip string players to the fact that, you know what, step back from that 
front of the stage, soloist, melodic plays, yeah. and enjoy being a support player, enjoy being a rhythm player. Yeah. You know, and that's the, it's, it's really a blast. More fun. And you have a lot more control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're driving the bus. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and when we, you know, often when we'd solo, you know, you'd be like, you know, you know, you go, you know, you would yeah. often play yeah. the baritone fiddle. So it's right. down there, it's in a support range. Mm -hmm. And letting everybody else um, uh, take the the lead stuff, and you would be just grooving away, and sometimes it would just gonna was just a this in the back, yeah. and some, sometimes it would be a little bit of good, uh -huh. uh -huh. right? And, but it would come back to this, and sometimes it would devolve, as we were saying, you know, it would just oh, like, yeah. go into something completely different. And we'd all just start making noise, and pretty soon we're all going like. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a good six years of, of teaching. Uh, I mean, I was I was I only started in the last six years uh, teaching a rhythm string class, and that was incredibly really? instructive for myself. Yeah, I would have to figure out. You know, okay, what do we call this stuff? Two B? Is it four, four? Four on the floor? Is it this? Is it that? Is it like yeah? You know, is it uh, you know three three two? The mother rhythm thing? All that stuff. Right. Yeah, putting names on stuff is part of teaching because. Um, that's what what's it's what's teachable is to put names on stuff. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. What else? Can, you know. Yeah. You can. So much of it is so ephemeral. teach by example, but you know, yeah, yeah, if you're actually having to impart some information that could be tested, then yeah. then you're going to be on the quiz. It's like naming stuff, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to have a name. That's how name. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was really interesting uh, because yeah, trying to parse some of the stuff and. and uh, Really, you know, when we were getting into, um, you know, the, some of the most unexpected sources for, like, really complicated rhythms, such as Swedish polskas, yeah. things like that, you know, right. where you're huh. kind of, there's this whole thing, like, nested triplets that are going on, um, where you're doing, like, a, it's really kind of, it, some polskas, polska, by the way, it comes from uh, the, uh, you know, the pol it's a, the precursor, of the, it's actually more of a mazurka, but that came from Poland. I guess those mm -hmm. guys were not that far away from Poland and, and right. Scandinavia and all yeah. that stuff's mixed around. Right. Um, it was really interesting kind of delving into that kind of, that sort of sub classical music, you know, semi popular music that's been going on in Western Europe for yeah. as long as, you know, longer really than, you know, what we think of as Western European yes, art music. Exactly. And it was the folk music really that. Intense. that a lot of classical music is based on yeah. Chopin and, you know... The oh. good melodies. Who had the good melodies? The bar guys, yeah. you know, the, fiddle, <laughs> the bar fiddlers, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, they took a lot of stuff. And and so that's that was really interesting, like, delving into, you know, this kind of... Like yeah, show me. Three, four giants. Turn, turn me on to some three, new, new things I yeah. don't know. There's so much I don't um, know. But the 9-8, for instance, you know, where you go, you know, you're thinking, like, uh, uh, you can think, well, the obvious way to... To uh, organize nine eight, it's the three groups of three, right? One two three, one two three, one two three, one. Like a so slip like, oh, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like a slip tune. But uh, you can also go twos with one with extra. One extra. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> one, one, two, three, four, one. Uh, wow, you know that's wow. an amazing thing. Huh. And, and does see, that happen? Against the three thing, or is it? Clear? Well, you have a three going. Somebody's doing a three, but uh, you're also, but not necessarily because maybe there's only two instruments. There's a there's a viola or a fiddle. They have violas and folk music over there. Uh -huh. Amazing. Uh, or like a nickel harpa, which is the giant stretched out right. violin with. Uh, it's it's basically got keys like a, a hurdy gurdy. Right. But uh, yeah. you're playing it with this little short bowstring kind of dodging. All <laughs> <laughs> the Swedish, you know, I don't know the Swedes. They're good at that and dodge stuff. But um, so yeah, so you get these melodies that like are uh, that will start on the first eighth note, uh, or the second eighth note of the bar. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Yeah. 
you, you know, that kind of stuff is, wow. you know, in a way that, you know, when I started hearing that stuff, that was sort of the, I kind of had the same response as you had to the Egberto, you know, the Brazilian stuff. Yeah. And um, really, you know, that's been, uh, although I wasn't able to actually pull it off, you know, physically for, you know, it's taken me a few years, but that kind of stuff is just fascinates me. And, um, you know, just things like, you know, getting people to play in seven, things like that. Seven is really the, kind of the easiest odd uh, meter, yeah. I think. I, I always felt it was easier than five for some reason. Yeah. Five, I always feel like I'm rushed. You know, yeah. I always like, There's oh, never okay, enough okay, time okay, for five. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> Oh, seven yeah, is okay. Yeah. But seven, you know. Yeah, yeah. Seven is its own world. Yeah, and then the, you know, there's the four, you know. Yeah, and there's there's some good. And there's a couple of good. Uh, there's uh, Norwegian, very popular Norwegian tune called the Phoenix, which uh, was written by recently by a woman named Anne Bjorn uh, Lien, who, um, you know, it's just a beautiful tune. Um, and uh, is that on a Hardanger or on a regular? It, she wrote it on a Hardanger. You can play it on anything, uh, including you know instruments that we you know. I haven't invented yet, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, which is, yeah, I see. Uh, but, yeah. Down, 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 up, up, up. up. Down, 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 you know, seven, eight. Yep. And then going from that to seven, four is a beautiful thing, because then you're, um, I would, you know, we naturally want to choose, I think, it's easier to choose four, three, right? You know, so you, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, you got two big downs and then down and up, right? Yeah. Two, down, one, down, 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 and up and down and down. You know, those yep. kind of things. Just getting people to feel that first. Don't count. Just go, wah, 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 right? You know, right. Yep. our emotions. Yes. Um, steps, and, you know. Steps, for sure. You know, all the Balkan stuff, right? It's all based on, yeah. right? Uh, you know, short, short, long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, that so that stuff is you know that getting people to feel all this stuff first was really a great exercise for me. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and then just those tricks that you know, how are you going to chop that? You know, how's that going to get chopped? Yeah. Especially you know, like things like even 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 like such as like six eight for instance where. You're going, um, you have to start, you know, usually the rule is down, down bows are down beats, up bows are up beats, but in, in a 6 eight situation, you have to start with an up stroke so that you get the back beat on the down stroke, right? So if you right. go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you're starting, so th those little tricks yeah. you know, all kind of feed into things. It's, it's really fun, actually. Yeah. You mentioned something a, a second ago is, you know, feeling it as opposed to, like, counting it, mm -hmm. you know, and that you have to feel it. And this idea of either dancing, it, using steps or something. Yeah. But that that change between using our brains to kind of figure it out and count mm -hmm. and or that part of our brain that does that and the other rest of our body <laughs> from here down yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's... Feeling, just feeling rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, and the more I, I teach it, the more I realize that, you know, I, I can explain it to you from, to, to you from, you know, today till tomorrow, yeah. but in, until you put it in your body, until you move to it, yeah. you're just never going to get it, it's because it's not, yeah. it's not yeah. up here. Yeah, and that's not to say that, you know, you can't, I mean, the, the brain is important just to be able to, you know, figure out, you yeah. know, how to feel it. You know, right. sometimes you have to figure that out. Right. How am I going to, what moves am I going to make in order to do that? So that's it's right. part of it. But right. ultimately... At, at some know, point, at some point in the process, it has to get into your mind. It has to be, physically. be it has to you become have to be, music. And, right. You know, and that's... Yeah, right. So. And, and uh, I think a lot of people are put off by odd meters because it seems so mathy or something. And, yeah. and it's really just a matter of like that... that you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah, in your arms yeah. or in your legs, you know. Yeah. Or put, like just the rotation of the spine, you know. Right. Da, 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 right, da. right. Yeah, that's a great one, too. Yep. A lot of times, I'll, you know, I've, I've been telling people that, you know, well, if you, you know, if you don't want to pound, you know, you don't want to <laughs> stomp your foot, yeah. you don't want to, you know, right. you don't want to be obvious, you know, there's, the, you know, you can just do slight rotation, you yep. know. And that's a great thing, you know. You can do that without people really noticing what's going on. In fact, I'm I'm doing. In fact, I'm doing that 
and I'm swimming the backstroke at the same time. And you don't even notice what's going on. I'm also driving a car, and uh, I'm, I'm solving all kinds of, like, uh, you know, orbital problems right now. You know, you don't even know, you know, you, I don't even know it. <laughs> and this... This is how we entertain ourselves <laughs> and on the road, you know. This is so this true. Is what, yeah. How we <laughs> get yeah. through the gig. Yeah. No, yeah. So true. <laughs> what, what's on the list? Uh, oh, I know what's on the list. <laughs> I know what's on the list. Uh oh. <clears throat> the. Uh -oh. Uh, it's usually the last segment of the show. I don't know if we're ready to wrap it, but we can do it here and then, you know, we'll, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll do others. We'll wrap it when we're getting ready. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> God damn it. But this is this is a, a part of the show that I call uh, Not My Gig. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Based on the uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell oh. Me, Not My Job. <laughs> in which, as my guest, something that hopefully they know nothing about. And... Um, oh, and Daryl Anger, your, I, you know, off on my music, um, that you would, you know, you would like print up parts, yeah. Bang Turtle Island, and you would, you know, print them up at home, and then you would hand me a part, and it would always uh, often have D Anger up on the top, yeah. and I was like, danger, what? <laughs> so we're going to ask you how much you know about Nick Danger. Ho oh, ho! From the fire sign, the fire sign oh, theater character. <laughs> and I, I. He's ready for anything. He's. Nick Danger, third eye. Uh, I want to order a, a pizza to go and no anchovies. No anchovies? You've got the wrong man. I spelled my name Danger. What? So there you go. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I spelled my name Danger. Danger. So we're going to ask you how much you know about Nick Danger. So, one of Danger's criminal nemesis uh, is described as a, a little man and a slimy weasel based on Dashiell Hammett's Jill Cai Cairo, as portrayed by Peter Lorre in the 1941 film The Maltese Falcon. What was his name, his, his evil nemesis? Was it A, Bill Weevil, <laughs> B, Sam Salamander, or C, Rocky Rococo? I believe it was Rocky Rococo. <laughs> you are absolutely right, my friend. <laughs> I saw that glimmer of recognition <laughs> yeah. at the mention. Oh, what of it, Sam. <laughs> What's the next one? <laughs> okay. True or false? 50-50 shot on yes. this one. Yes. Danger's old college flame, Betty Jo Bielowski, uses several aliases. Melanie Haber, Audrey Farber, and Susan Underhill. But, quote, everyone knew her as Nancy. <laughs> True or false? <laughs> Rococo's and Nancy's names are a gag based on the Beatles song, Back in the USSR. True or false? Uh, false. <laughs> you are right. It is. I just went through the, <laughs> went through the whole time. Song. <laughs> the entire <Yeah>. lyric. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knew her as Nancy it was from Rocky Raccoon. Yes, that's a and that's ring. The Rocky Rococo reference. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's your third so question. You can get a, a perfect score with this one, and if you were listening carefully, you might have caught it. Nick Danger was often announced by the narrator as Nick Danger, corrective detective, or B, Nick Danger, third eye. Or C, Nick Danger, Cops Cop. <laughs> third <Yeah>. nostril. <laughs> it was the third nostril, wasn't it? Well, you have a perfect yeah. well, that score. Was no, yeah. 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 yeah, I was a big fan of those guys, even though yeah. I could never understand anything after about the first five minutes. I was completely <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> Dude, man, we could... We could 
we ramble could go on, on for a long time, and after we turn the cameras off, we will. Yeah. Um, but what a joy to have oh, you yeah. here, man. Oh, Trace. It's just My brother. so great to be here. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, yeah, Thank I'm hoping you. to have you over Thank to you. my... My little school. Yeah, because yeah. Daryl now lives in Nashville. We are lucky enough to have him here, and that's why. And it's post-pandemic now. We're all vaxxed yeah. up. Yeah. And uh, we're doing the anti-Zoom moose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the, the moose podcast. Moose. So, <laughs> so there you have it, okay. folks. Daryl Anger, straight from the horse's mouth, the chop, and then some. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> Thank Thanks you for bro. having me, man.